talking about family, a lot of things have come up. And Telmo, for example, says that family is a word that can be used to describe networks that are established or created um, spontaneously or over a certain period of time in many different locations that you can return to and rely upon those connections and those networks and a sort of kinship can develop. So you can have a, a network of people in Paris, for example, when you're living there and then leave Paris and move to Krakow, create a similar network and then always return to Paris and be able to immediately fall back into this family situation as a place of belonging. But um, Andrea disagreed with the idea that the word family can simply be removed from its original definition as a Christian model of something that is actually has to do with blood and lineage and property and something that is very structured in its own way and not something that can simply be lifted off an archaic definition and simply be slapped upon a new semblance of a network or something. And it kind of relates, I suppose, a lot to a picture that Helena was shown as a child in a school book in Greece. And it was a picture of a mother and a father and a brother and a sister. And it was, that was the picture of a family, the model of a family. And the children were supposed to be able to identify with that model. But Helena couldn't because her family was divorced. So for her, that wasn't her family or that wasn't her sense of family. And maybe that is the model that a new definition of family, one with several fathers or several mothers or a stepfather or stepbrothers, will always have to struggle with this original model. But Ruggiero said that familiar was the adjective that we should keep in mind when talking about family. That family is a place where you feel familiar. It's something that breeds familiarity. But maybe you don't always feel familiar in your family. Like Kristen, she didn't speak to her mother for 10 years. Are they still familiar? What if you feel more familiar, for example, with the people in a nightclub that you dance to without looking at? Or what if you feel familiar to the people you work with? Or if you feel familiar to the people you meet on a club, on the internet, that you've never even had a sort of direct physical relationship with? Are the words familiar and family still connected in some inherent way? It's difficult to know. I want to know how heavy a child feels in your arms. I want to know what it feels like when I'm crying on your shoulder. I want to know what your mother says to you when she gives you advice. I want to know what the first time you flew in an airplane felt like. I want to know what makes you nervous or insecure and what makes you feel weird about yourself. Sometimes I feel weird about the fact that I am from Brazil and I don't like samba or caipirinha or carnival. Sometimes I feel weird about the fact that as a Belgian guy, I have the feeling that I always have to be like cool, happy and easygoing and actually I am. Sometimes I feel weird about the fact that I was born in Turin in a rich family, surrounded by culture, by beauty, and I never went through a war. Sometimes I feel weird about the fact that I grow older and older, but I still feel like a child and I don't know, will I ever be able to become a mother myself? Sometimes I feel weird about the fact that I am gay and I don't know any song by Madonna. Sometimes I feel weird about the fact that in my family I never heard the words I love you. Sometimes I feel weird about the fact that some people don't consider me a real woman or maybe a lesbian because my breasts are so small. Sometimes I feel weird about the fact that I was raised in a Catholic school and I hated it so much. And as an adult I still don't believe in God, but I realized that lately I named my last cat Jesus. Sometimes I feel weird about the fact that for me Europe it's like an amusement park that or a volcano that will explode soon. Sometimes I feel weird about the fact that I have an Italian traditional family and I feel I was adopted. 
Sometimes I feel weird about the fact that in my home country, the true Finns tell me to jump into the sea and swim back to Sweden, just because I belong to the Swedish-speaking minority. Sometimes I feel weird about the fact that I'm supposed to choose of being top or bottom. Sometimes I feel weird about the fact that I could totally relate to Beyonce's song, the single ladies. Sometimes I feel weird about the fact that it's five years that I'm not seeing a vagina. Sometimes I feel weird about the fact that I am not sexy. Sometimes I feel weird about the fact. Sometimes I feel weird. Sometimes I feel weird about the fact that I am not sexy. Sometimes I feel weird about the fact that I am not sexy. Sometimes I feel weird about the fact that I am not sexy. Sometimes I feel weird I'm not a model, I'm not a selfless lover, I'm not a housewife that stays at home waiting for her husband to get back from work, telling her how stressful and exhausting the day in the office was. Non sono una suora pallida e pavida che si nasconde dietro i muri dei monasteri cattolici a fare sogni erotici, help me? Uh, erotici sul papa. Ok, sul papa. I'm not a skinny blonde girl with a chihuahua in her handbag who shops all day long at Prada, Gucci and Versace trying to look slim and sexy, hoping to get fucked 24-7. Non sono la mamma italiana che sta tutto il giorno chiusa in casa a guardare cento vetrine e a cucinare per i suoi cinque figli e i suoi venti nipoti. I'm not an aggressive businesswoman who fights her way up in the corporate world and ends up even more empty and lonely and corrupt than her main straight competitors. I am not a crazy young rebel artist who cuts a vagina and exhibits videotapes of her father raping her at the bedroom pavilion of the Venice Biennale. Non sono credente, ma non sono atea. I'm not a vegan. I'm not talking about my family traumas a lot. I'm not shy. I'm not a famous actor that gives dieting tips for Vogue or Grazia. I am not a sexless German power woman that forces all European nations into austerity. I'm not the girl that gives relationship advice to all her gay friends and receives fashion tips in return. I'm not conservative. E non sono una radicale di sinistra che viene picchiata dalla polizia italiana mentre sta dimostrando contro un sistema finanziario corrotto. I'm not having a lot of nervous breakdowns because of men that don't love me back. I'm not shy when I walk into a room. Jag pratar inte med en gyr på Leandrös så att folk inte ska bli rädda. I beat up my older brother when I was 12. <laughs> and the dog boys in school to shut the fuck up when they were making fun of me. But I'm not a butch, lesbian, man hater in Doc Martin's boots. Je suis encore capable d'être un petit peu romantique et de faire des rêves de toi et moi s'embrasser quelque part. You and me kissing somewhere near the sea or in my bedroom or in your car or in the toilet of the theater while a really boring show is going on and we leave the audience because we decide that making love and feeling each other's skin is so much better than this pathetic, useless crap that they are presenting here. So, call me back. It is okay? Let go on. I want to be with you. Now, call me, call me, me, call me, 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 call 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 me, call
talking about uh, relationships kind of brought up two overwhelming models. One was a sort of commitment phobic idea of maybe being lost. A lot of the time it had to do with men not being able to kind of commit to the idea even of being in a relationship. Yorain, for example, who spends six days in a row with a man and they are very sort of happy together in this period, but then don't speak for another week or two. And um, Caroline, who meets men who are incapable even of suggesting a restaurant because they don't want to be viewed as someone who's already making decisions or already committed to the idea of a relationship. Um, there's also the idea that commitment, in a, in a sense, can be something that's, that's too much pressure, that's overwhelming, like Skyping every night is too intense. And, and then there's the, the other model, so that's the, the pre-packaged sort of perfect relationship where both people are searching for a relationship, often online, and they have all these sort of adjectives to choose from and all these sort of ways where they can perfectly design their partner. And then these two people are supposed to come together as if they're supposed to fit together like an enzyme and a substrate or a, a, a perfect car that's designed just for you or a wardrobe full of clothes that fit perfectly. But surely, as Telmo reminded us, a relationship is supposed to be somewhere where actually you're criticized and where you're challenged and where someone makes you different or makes you justify yourself in some way. So it's a space, surely, where you should be allowed to fail. And maybe you can still be faithful to this idea of being together and being committed, but that you can still fail. Um, Martina. Can you describe your ideal relationship? Well, my idea of relationship is not clear enough right now. Uh, I am not in a relationship with anybody. And I guess I don't even know with whom I would like a relationship, if with a man or a woman, I'm still not sure. Like, I know I'm bisexual, but do I have to choose before if I want to fall in love with a man or a woman? And also, I'm not blood related to my family since I was adopted, so that's not a relationship or is it? I'm always wondering. Because blood relationships are really important here in Italy. Like, we don't call them relationship. We are calling them like binding, actually. Um, so yes, relationship is something you can't really choose. Like you can't choose the people you have a relationship with because you happen to know people by chance and even your parents or the family you grow up with. You don't really choose those people. They just come in your life and somehow you start to connect with them and build something with them. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Chris? Can you describe the difference between a male body and a female body? Um, it's difficult for me to answer because for me there's no clear male and female. Um, it's it was given to me by my parents, mostly, this idea of what male and female means. And when I was really young, like four or five years old, I remember I watched commercials and was fascinated by female toys, like Barbie dolls and, and stuff, and, and I wanted to try out skirts, but I didn't really associate them with just female. And I, I asked my mother, and she said, no, you can't do that, you're a boy and you're supposed to behave like a male. And I, I didn't really get that idea, and I, I, f I felt like I, I have to live up to that and, and, and yeah, please her. But later on, for me, it's more stereotype. Like, actually, male for me means a stereotypical Italian man. What's an Italian man? For me, He's macho, muscular, uh, suntanned, short hair, 
He's decisive, he's dominant, he's strong, and all his movements, they're really directed and pointed at something. There's no, no space. It's all really clear. Thank you. doesn't make a sound. I haven't left the house for weeks. Been listening to all these interviews. Type them out. Sometimes I just punch the computer or smash the screen. Afterwards, I'm really calm. When I go out, everything collapses. Every sound, every image on top of me, in me. Everything much too loud and and if I talk to someone, I become them. I become what they say. I am what I see, what I hear. It floats into me and I don't know anymore what belongs to me and what belongs to the outside world. I've had it since I was a kid. This disorder, disease, gift. Dislocation, I don't know what to call it. I perceive everything, everything, no filter, no protection. Every sound, every breath. The machines are standby at night. The silence. And every feeling I've ever felt, suddenly it's there, in me. And washes me away. Everything slips away. I can't move anymore. My heart hurts. I can barely breathe. I lose all sense of belonging. Somehow, I always need to find solutions. Nuclear sets of rule, guides now. But after two days, I don't remember at all why I decided for or against something. There's a body missing here. This absence of another body is eating such strange wounds into my skin. Strange. Everything is dissolving. No more protection. God. Kiss me. Kiss me. Now and forever. Be everything to me. Right now. Get me out of here. I have to get out of this. I can't. I can't connect with anything anymore. Identify with anything. Nothing makes me feel safe, so so kiss me, but mean it seriously. Mean it seriously. Mean me, and that you can't sleep at night without me anymore. Fight hard. Hurt me. Let's become one. Here, right now. Let's tear down all the boundaries that could ever exist between people. I have to get out of this. Out of this, this body, this prison. We can fuck until we bleed. Bite each other's lips to pieces as we kiss. But we'll never be one. That kills me. Change that. Change that right now. Come on. Come on, kiss me. Hold me so tight that I can't breathe. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me that you're safe. 